It's a region of space of time, where gravity is so strong that nothing, no particles, nor even electromagnetic radiation, such as light, can escape from it. The theory of general relativity predicts that a, that a sufficiently compact mass can deform space-time and form a black hole. The boundary of no escape is called the event horizon. Although it has an enormous effect, <clears throat> an effect on the fate and circumstances of an object crossing it. According to general relativity, it has no locally detectable features in many ways. In many ways, a black hole acts like an ideal black body as it reflects no light. Moreover, quantum field theory. <laughs> no, I'm using, I'm reading black hole here and you're calling it animal planet. <laughs> Come on. It's not geo. It's not, not geo. <laughs> I just call it Discovery Channel MC Edition. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> Let's go back. Moreover, Quantum field theory in, cur in curved space-time predicts that the event horizons emit Hawking radiation with the same spectrum as a black body of a temperature inversely proportional to its mass. This temperature is on the billionth of a Kelvin for black holes of stellar mass. This temperature is on the order of billions, but... Uh, <laughs> making it essentially impossible to observe directly. Objects whose gravitational fields are too strong for light to escape were first considered in the 18th century by John Michel and Pierre Simon Laplace. The first modern solution of general relativity that would characterize a black hole was found by Carl Schwarzschild in 1916. Its interpretation that the region of space from which nothing can escape was first published by David Finkelstein in 1958. Black holes were long considered a mathematical curiosity. It was not until the 1960s that theoretical work showed that they were generic prediction of general relativity. <laughs> no! Carl Schwarzschild. Come on. <laughs> the discovery of neutron stars by Jocelyn Bell Bernal in 1967 sparked interest in gravitational collapse, compact objects as a possible astrophysical reality. First black hole, known as such was Cygnus X-1, identified by several researchers independently in 1971. Black holes of stellar mass form when very massive stars collapse at the end of their life cycle. After a black hole was formed, it can continue to grow by absorbing mass from its surroundings. By absorbing other stars and merging with other black holes, supermassive black holes of millions of solar masses before, there is a consensus that supermassive black holes exist in the centers of most gravity in galaxies. The presence of black holes can be inferred through the interaction of other matter and electromagnetic radiation, such as a visible light. <laughs> Very good. Nice. Hey, you know that meme, huh? <laughs> Matter that falls on the black hole can form an external acceleration disk. Acceleration disk heated by friction forming quasars. Some of the brightest objects in the universe. 
stars are seem too close to massive black hole and be shred into streamers that shine very brightly before being swallowed quotation marks if there are other stars orbiting the black hole their orbits can be used to determine the black hole's mass and location such observations can be used to exclude possible alternatives such as neutron stars in this way astronomers uh, 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 astronomers yeah. uh, uh, I'm done here <laughs> hey I didn't notice it I'm done uh, in this way Astronomers have identified numerous stellar black hole candidates in binary systems and established that the radiant source known as Sagittarius A and the core of the Milky Way galaxy contains a supermassive black hole of about 4.3 million solar masses. Fuck. 